Hello, my name is Charlie Wordman. I'm a soil fertility specialist uh, in the Department of Agronomy and Horticulture at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And I wish to inform, tell you about a, a new tool that a team of us developed for assessing nitrogen loss in Nebraska. And uh, we do have this NEP guide out. And um, you can find this NEP guide easily enough by going to UNL Extension Publications and doing a search for NLAT or Nitrogen Loss Assessment Tool. You can do a Google search on uh, Nebraska, NLAT will find it. Once you get this, uh, you see here there is a button. If you have that in digital form, the NEP guide, you can click on this and that'll take you to, to the um, website. Uh, which where the print here is a bit small, but it's uh, the soil management website under CropWatch. And at the top of the list is a link to, uh, uh, that, you are, that you can click on to get to the Excel tool. The tool is in Excel, uh, and to be able to use it, you do need to have Excel on your computer. The tool is intended to help us ask two questions. How much nitrogen loss on average occurs for a field as it's managed to leaching, to volatilization, to denitrification, and nitrous oxide emission? And what is the effect of an alternative practice uh, on each uh, loss likely to be? And is there opportunity for multiple benefits that is um, impacting more than one loss at a time with some management practices. So NLAD is a decision tool. And as with many decision tools, it's constructed to incorporate much good information in an easy to form, easy to use uh, format. Yeah, there are a lot of mathematical functions in the tool. These inner, inner link uh, overlap, etc. And it is quite complex, but it's, the tool is developed in a way to make it easy to use and for you to apply a great deal of information uh, with very little effort. The tool is intended for occasional use to make decisions of several years, that is for medium and long-term planning. Uh, and again, to get your estimates of current losses for a field, and for many of our fields, you'll find that your losses probably are not very great and that there isn't good justification to change your management practices. But other fields are much more higher risk and will have substantial losses, and there could be substantial benefit in, in other practices. It is not intended for seasonal or in-season decisions. So we have other tools for that. We have, for instance, our NEB guide, our extension circular on corn fertilizer use. We had the University of Nebraska Lincoln Nitrogen Calculator. There's a tool called ADAPTN. There's a MAZEN is another tool. So these other tools are available for helping us make uh, seasonal, that is pre-season, uh, and uh, in-season decisions on how much nitrogen to apply. NLAT is more of a strategic tool. Should I be using inhibitors? Should I be doing side dress application or fertigation? Or What's the effect of uh, reducing or increasing end rates or irrigation rates? So with these three slides, I'm stopping on this introduction and I'm going to switch to the tool itself uh, to demonstrate how easy it is to use and, um, and how you can easily compare different scenarios. Now the first time you use the tool on a computer, uh, uh, say you've downloaded it, you have it on your computer, you bring it up, you're going to have to enable content. There is this message that will appear at the top, macros have been disabled. You click on that gray button, enable content, and that goes away and you're ready to work with it. And you see it brings up the current date right away. We have some white cells and we have gray cells where we put in information. With the white cells, we always have a drop-down list, a little arrow on the right-hand side that we click on, and we can make a selection. And here it is for the scenario number. Now, you can change the scenario number manually, or it will advance automatically as well. We then have a drop-down list for counties, so all of 
the counties of Nebraska are listed here. And let's take Adams County, uh, since it's easy to get to. Um, and then there are some gray cells where you can put information for your own records, but it's not needed, like field name, scenario name, acres, et cetera. And again, we don't need it, so I'll just put some nonsense in there. Uh, on the right, then, we have need information on production practices. Do we have fall tillage? Do we have spring tillage? Do we have tile drainage? Do we have a fall or winter cover crop? If so, we check, check the appropriate box, like this. Uh, then we have a drop-down list here for the crops, and it only considers corn, soybeans. So you can do continuous corn, you can do corn, soybean rotation, you can do con uh, continuous soybean, or maybe corn, corn, soybean. Uh, you can set that up. So let's do corn, soybean rotation. We select corn, we select soybean as our previous crop. It brings up a value for the yields. You can overwrite these values as you can with all values in the gray cells. So let's say we have a nice high yield situation with maybe 240 bushels of corn and 270 or, and 70 bushels of soybean on average. We scroll down, we get to our soil information. When we selected the county, it brought up the list of soil units for that county. So we see there's you know, quite a long list of soil units for, for Adams County. And let's look down and um, let's try this cast fine sandy loam, rare, rarely flooded. Now, when we select the soil, it brings up information on five soil properties. We see here it brought up information on organic matter and pH, but it all, and these can be edited, but it also brings up information on sand content, the hydrologic property of the soil, and the drainage class of the soil, and that we cannot edit. But here, for instance, uh, 0.75, maybe your soil test values tell you something different. Maybe you have 1.5% organic matter. We can change that. When we selected county, I looked up the average rainfall for the county, out of season and in season. If we want to, we can change these values as well, but we won't do that. Uh, we'll leave them as it is. Then to the right of that, we have um, irrigation. And we have four choices, no irrigation, pivot, furrow, drip irrigation. Let's go with furrow irrigation. And let's, it asks for how much water typically is applied. Well, maybe we do four irrigations and on average it's four inches a piece. That's 16 inches. Um, and how much nitrate N do we have in our irrigation water? Let's say we have five parts per million. We then get to our fertilizer application, our nitrogen application, fertilizer nitrogen application. Here we have our list of different fertilizer options and methods of application. Let's say we are doing anhydrous ammonia injected, and maybe we go at, um, at what? Um, furrow irrigation, let's put it 240 pounds per acre, and it's been applied in the fall. Uh, we have an option to use an inhibitor. At this point, we won't use an inhibitor. If we're doing manure application, we can put the information in the ear, and I'll get back to this. But with no manure application, we've completed it. All of our input data is complete, and below we get our results. The first several lines are a summary of the information that we put in, and then we have our losses. So it says denitrification, about six pounds loss. Leaching loss, 30 pounds. Volatilization, 25 pounds. Nitrous oxide, 4.7 pounds for a total loss of 65.9 pounds. We can save the output by clicking a button on the left, which isn't showing up well on the screen, uh, but I clicked it. And when I did that, it changed the scenario number. It is now scenario two. 
So what should we change? Let's try to change our irrigation method to see what effect that'll have. A pivot, and by using a pivot, we have better app control on our water, and we'll just do nine inches, and um, we we'll, won't change anything else. And we see now our leaching has dropped from 30-something down to 20-something. We're going to save that output and we'll look at it side by side, the output of several scenarios, and uh, see how it does for us. Let's try use of an uh, inhibitor, NSERV, uh, uh, with the anhydrous. An inhibitor that slows the rate of conversion of ammonium N to nitrate. So it's, the window for leaching is reduced. And we're not going to look at the results at this point, we're just going to save it. Let's try one more change. Uh, here we see that the, the total end supply is 419 pounds, where the total where crop uptake is 288 pounds. So we have more end out there than we need. And so let's reduce this amount to maybe 180. What effect will that have on uh, some of our loss? And then for the final thing, you notice up here on the soils, the pH is a bit high, 7.3. Now we know with high pH, we're more likely to have volatilization loss than with lower pH. So let's reduce this pH to let's say 6.9. And we'll save that output. At the bottom here, you see we have three tabs. One is help instructions, and that's mainly about the macros that I started with. Then we have the data entry, data entry sheet, and that's where we've been working. Now we'll go to the report worksheet, where the results of these five scenarios uh, have been saved. And we're going to scroll down, and we're just going to look at the losses. So this first one is where we had the furrow irrigation, quite a lot of water applied, and quite high nitrogen rates, 240 pounds of ammonium and applied. And our leaching, our, and as we saw before, we had about six pounds lost due to denitrification, 30 pounds lost due to, um, uh, uh, let me try to make this a bit larger, maybe you can see it better. There, 30 pounds lost to leaching, 25 to volatilization, five to nitrous oxide, a total of 65. The next thing we did, if I remember right, is we kept that same nitrogen rate, but we used a nitrification inhibitor. And by doing this, we reduced our leaching loss by 10 pounds per acre, quite a big savings. <clears throat> and environmental implications of it can be quite great. In the third scenario, we kept everything the same as in the second scenario, but we reduced the nitrogen rate, I think. Let me check, we, no, I might be confused on this. Right, oh, we switched to pivot with the second scenario. So with the second scenario, we, we used pivot irrigation with less water as compared with the first where we had furrow irrigation and much water. And so we got this reduction in, 10 pound reduction in leaching loss and about an 11 pound reduction in total loss. Then we continued with the pivot irrigation, but we used the inhibitor, the NSERV, with the anhydrous. And that gave us a two pound reduction as compared to scenario two. So not such a great loss, and that might be surprising, but remember, or you see here, our total nitrogen available is about 420 pounds. The inhibitor is only working on the 200 pounds of, or 240 pounds, what was it? 240 pounds of nitrogen applied as, uh, 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 as anhydrous ammonia with the inhibitor. So it's doing us some good, but uh, you know, not a tremendous effect. And then we did what? Um, we reduced our nitrogen rate in this case to 180. And we see we got a quite a substantial reduction in leaching here, and our total loss is now 42 as compared to 66 when we started. 
Now the other thing that we did for scenario five is to change the pH of the soil. And there we're interested to see what effect that soil pH has on, um, has on the um, volatilization loss. And that's this row here. Volatilization is here, we follow it across, and we see we've cut it in half essentially by having that lower pH situation. So it demonstrates with, with um, high pH soils and surface application, um, especially, but even without surface application, even with injected, we can have quite considerable loss of nitrogen. Uh, so <clears throat> those are those five scenarios. Um, let's look at manure a bit, and what we'll do at the top here is we'll make the scenario number four, and then we'll be comparing the five that we have already with the new number four, and let's do something here with manure. Let's say at some point we applied feedlot manure, and it was applied at 30 tons per acre, the application rate was to apply it to the surface without incorporation in seven days. We maybe did a fall application. Here it's brought up book values for water content, ammonium nitrogen content, and organic nitrogen content. These can be revised. Hopefully you'll have a manure test uh, report from, for that application. You can revise according to that. And you put in the year of application. So if it's for the current crop, it'll give full value, but it does give residual value for three previous crops. So let's say it was applied in 2013. And uh, we won't do more, we'll just save the output. And um, we go to report and, um, and we'll scroll down a bit. And again, let's look over to the right to see where, where we're at. And one thing we want to look at is leaching loss. Um, and we need to compare uh, scenario four to scenario five. Well, because of that manure application, the residual effect of it, we do have more nitrogen and it is resulting in um, uh, more leaching again as compared to without that residual effect of the manure. And we're having more denitrification loss, as we see in this row, 7.3 compared to 4.8, and more nitrous oxide. It did not calculate any additional loss due to volatilization. Total loss of 48 pounds compared to 31 pounds. So it is important to consider the manure, uh, not just in, for the year of application, but for the residual effect as well. So with that, I hope that you see that this is a very easy tool to use and that uh, you can do some nice first assessment. Do you have significant losses with, um, with your field and your management situation? And can you gain much by some alternative practice? Thank you.